Now that we've had time to look at each of the Buffalo Bills 2020 NFL draft picks, it's time to discuss how we think they really did. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Believers Talk. My name is Joe and welcome to this 2020 NFL Draft Great Edition of Believers Talk where we take a look at each one of the Buffalo Bills 7 draft picks and we ask ourselves how did they truly do during the 2020 NFL Draft. Again guys, thank you for joining me on Believers Talk. My name is Joe. If you are new to this channel guys, please be sure to help out the channel a lot. Hit that subscribe button for continuing Buffalo Bills and Buffalo Sports Breakdowns. And after you hit that subscribe button, you want to hit that notification bell. YouTube will notify you when we post new content, guys. Just because the draft is over and there isn't much going on right now, I promise there's going to be some great content down the line here. So you want to make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell while you're here give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section what was your grade for the buffalo bills draft overall you can go pick by pick you can be overall overall grade let me know what your favorite pick was of the 2020 nfl draft let me know what your least favorite pick was of the 2020 nfl draft again leave those in the comment section always love reading those always enjoy getting back to you guys so let's get right into my thoughts on how the buffalo bills did in the 2020 NFL draft. I'm going to remind you all of the Buffalo Bills seven draft picks and then we'll go each individual pick. I'll go one by one, give you some of my uh, things to like about them, some of the things that I'm still questioning about these picks. Each draft pick has a question or two, right? I mean, it's not like we go into this thinking, oh, we got the cream of the crop, best draft ever. Uh, you know, every single one of these players is going to be a future Hall of Famer. That's not how this works, right? There's questions with every single draft pick. So let's go through our seven draft picks. Remember, we did not have a first round draft pick, but we had two sixth round draft picks this year in the NFL draft. So our first draft pick was in the second round, pick number 54. And in, in the second round, the Buffalo Bills selected AJ Epineza out of Iowa. Our second pick was in the third round, pick number 86. We pick up running back Zach Moss out of Utah. Our third pick was wide receiver Gabriel Davis. Picked him up in the fourth round, pick 128. Ah, the University of Central Florida, UCF wide receiver. Our fifth round pick, number 167, and our fourth pick overall, Jake Fromm, quarterback out of Georgia. Might have surprised a few people with our fifth pick. We picked in the sixth round, pick number 188, Tyler Bass, kicker out of Georgia Southern. With our sixth pick in the sixth round, pick 207, we picked Isaiah Hodgins, wide receiver out of Oregon State. And with the last pick for the Buffalo Bills in the 2020 NFL Draft, in the seventh round, pick 239, the Buffalo Bills selected Dane Johnson, cornerback out of Pittsburgh. So let's start Obviously, with that first pick, round two, pick 54, A.J. Epineza, defensive end out of Iowa. Going into this draft, it was well known that the Buffalo Bills were probably looking for some defense, defensive edge help, guys. I mean, you just think about what we lost just last season, or this season, I should say, Sack Lawson and Jordan Phillips accounted for 16 sacks for the Buffalo Bills last season. That's hard to replace on that defensive line. Now we know that we added Mario Addison. We know that we've added some other pieces on that defensive end on the defensive line. And we know that coach uh, Leslie Frazier and coach McDermott are gonna have this defense coached up and we should be all right. But we needed to get younger at edge. If you look at uh, Jerry Hughes, if you look at Mario Addison, both well into their 30s, I think they'll both be 33 going into next season. Maybe Hughes is 32 but both in the 30s so we needed to get younger at the edge position position so aj epines is a perfect fit for that was there to like about this fit the fit well we just talked about one of the things the age the youth we need to get younger at the defensive end position Pro Football Focus had A.J. Epineza as the second best defensive end. So you want to talk about great value here at pick 54. A lot of draft process, a lot of mock drafts, especially early on, had A.J. Epineza as a top 15, maybe top 20 NFL prospect. The Buffalo Bills get him here at 54. Absolutely wonderful value. You can't beat the value of this pick. He was tops on Mel's, Mel Kuyper's best available when we picked him as well. So a great fit here. Great value. Fills a need, which is also very important. 
I don't think we could have done much better with our first over, first pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, 54th overall, picking AJ Epineza. Now, if you want to get nitpicky, if you want to ask yourself, well, what are some questions going into the season, going into his Buffalo Bills career for AJ Epineza? It's simple. It's the scheme. Does his scheme? Does does he fit the scheme of the Buffalo Bills? He has some uh, some capabilities of getting around the edge, right? Getting some sacks. We saw double-digit sacks from Epineza both in 2018 and 2019. However, if you remember, Shaq Lawson at Clemson had 12 and a half sacks his last year at Clemson, turned himself into a first-round pick by the Buffalo Bills. And how many of you up the, out there were a little frustrated with Shaq Lawson at times during his four-year ten, tenure in Buffalo? I know I was at times. He came on strong as of late, and like I said, last year he came he had six and a half sacks, so that's pretty impressive. But there were some frustrations. Wonder if there's going to be some frustrations here with AJ Epineza. But right now he's not no be the starter. He's not going to be thrown in as a starter like Shaq Lawson was. He's going to be a plug-and-play type guy, holds the edge pretty well. That's why I give AJ Epineza out of Iowa an A-plus grade. Then you move on to the Buffalo Bills second pick. Zach Moss picked up in the third round, pick 86. Uh, Running back out of Utah, plenty of things to like here. He adds a great one-two punch to the Buffalo Bills backfield if you include Devin Singletary in that as well. Look back at 2019, something that he's done throughout his career and something that translates well from college to the pros is he breaks tackles. He's a tough runner. In 2019, Zach Moss had over a thousand yards rushing after contact. After contact, he actually broke 0.33, uh, one third tackles uh, per carry. So that's pretty impressive for Zach Moss. Now that does lead to some durability concerns. But before I get into that, another one of my likes is he's another good value. A lot of people had him as a second late round, maybe early third round pick. And here the Buffalo Bills get him late in the third round, pick 86. Some questions as I led into some durability issues. With that tough running, you do have to wonder how long he will last in the NFL. He did have meniscus surgery in 2018, so he has already had some surgery that may affect his running in the future. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. But the good news is we know we have Devin Singletary there as well, going to split the load a little bit, not leave so much for Zach Moss out of Utah. Another thing that's left for some question mark is his speed. I Obviously, these tough runners don't always have the most, uh, the quickest speed, the quickest feet. However, that could be underestimated too. I know he didn't run fast at the NFL Combine, but some players play faster than they run at the Combine, and this guy is one of them. So those are some question marks. So for those question marks, I give Zach Moss his grade an A during the 2020 NFL Draft. You just can't beat the value at 86. We knew we needed to get depth at the running back position. We take care of that, and that is why I give Zach Moss the grade for the Buffalo Bills as an A. You move on to our third pick, round four, pick 128, Gabe Davis, Gabriel Davis, a wide receiver out of UCF, a good wide receiver, solid. Again, you talk about the depth of this wide receiver class, definitely has a great depth there, and he might have been a second round draft pick in other draft classes. However, he drops to the fourth round due to the depth. You really like this guy's size, okay? 6'2", just a big guy, knows how to go up and get it, okay? And, and he's really good at getting the ball at its highest point. So if you throw a fade route to him in the end zone or you throw a jump ball to him at some point, Throw it high, which Josh Allen loves to do, and this guy's going to be able to go up and get it. Also good catching the ball over the shoulder, which if he runs those deeper routes, if you look for a tall receiver downfield, Josh Allen makes a play with his feet maybe. He's able to extend and throw it down. Then you know that this guy can track down a ball, which again, Josh Allen had issues with overthrows in 2019. This guy might be able to help with that. So with pick 128, the Buffalo Bills pick Dave, uh, Gabriel Davis, out of UCF. Some question marks about Gabriel Davis is his route running capabilities. Not the best wide receiver in this draft class when it comes to route running. Another issue that he had in college was what he did after the catch, right? Not great with yards after catch. And that's a big issue when you talk about teaming him up with Josh Allen. One thing that we've noticed in the first two years of Josh Allen's career is he doesn't do a great job at throwing wide receivers open like so many good quarterbacks do. That's one of the things he really has to work on in the third year in the NFL. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that from Josh Allen, especially when it comes to his working with Gabriel Davis. So for those concerned reasons, I gave the Gabe Davis uh, pick a B 
We got picking him up in the fourth round, pick number 128. Maybe we could have got a better wide receiver earlier. However, due to the um, due to the picks that we used, AJ Epineza and Zach Moss, obviously we weren't going to get a better wide receiver with those two picks due to the value of the picks we got. Maybe trade up, get a better wide receiver at that spot. Maybe that's a good spot to do that. I don't know. I just think it's a B. Could have been a little bit better, but could have been a whole heck of a lot worse. So not bad deal for the Buffalo Bills. Now you go to the round five pick, pick 167. And this is where things began to, uh, some, some Bills fans really began to question what the Buffalo Bills were doing here. With their fifth round pick, the Buffalo Bills select Jake Fromm, quarterback out of Georgia. And I know I did a video with my initial reaction about what's wrong with Fromm. Uh, and I still stand by that. I don't think there's anything wrong with picking up Jake Fromm in the fifth round. I think that Jake Fromm has great leadership qualities, some qualities that he shares with Josh Allen, our starting quarterback. And if you look at Jake Fromm college days in Georgia, he limits his mistake. That'll be some good, uh, maybe some good knowledge for Josh Allen to lean on as far as what he does to limit his mistakes. Now, maybe not as big of a risk taker as Josh Allen is. So there might be some ebb and flow there. There might be some give and take, if you will, between Josh Allen and Jake Fromm as far as um, what you're going to do, what you're going to see from that quarterback position. And the great value of this pick, again, fifth round pick 167. You got to like the value. A lot of mock drafts had Jake Fromm going in the fourth round, some even as early as late third uh, quarterback out of Georgia, winning quarterback out of Georgia. It's just hard to compete with that. Now, as some Georgia fans have commented here on this channel, it's a little bit of an oversight. Georgia was a run-heavy team, but so are the Buffalo Bills. Maybe not as run-heavy as the Georgia Bulldogs were in college, but still you can get by with the type of offense the Buffalo Bills run. Now, some question marks. Obviously, there's some question marks with his arm strength, right? He's struggled at times uh, with the arm strength. We saw that during the combine's velocity on his throws isn't quite there, and that's going to be tough playing in Buffalo with those swirling wins. And then also one of the questions I have is where does he fit on the depth chart with the draft, with the signing of uh, Jake Fromm, with the drafting of Jake Fromm, does that mean there's no room on the depth, depth chart for Joe Webb? Maybe he'll be a fourth quarterback to bring into camp, but once that's over, do you get rid of Webb? Is he going to be on the practice squad, Jake Fromm, for uh, for a year or two? Or does he come in and immediately back up Josh Allen? If so, what does that mean for Matt Barkley? You opened up some questions with this draft pick, and that's okay. We don't mind questions, but there's questions nonetheless. And for that reason, I give Jake from the 167th overall pick by the Buffalo Bills, a grade of a B minus. Then we go on to the sixth round, pick number 188, and the Buffalo Bills pick up kicker Tyler Bass uh, out of Georgia Southern, one of the better kickers on the draft board this year. I think he was the second best kicker on most draft boards. So for that reason, I like this grade. Obviously, he has some great leg power. Most of you have seen the video on Twitter of him kicking a six or a 55 yarder without taking a single step leading into the kick. Pretty impressive, a 65 yarder with only one step leading into the kick. So you know he has the power to kick. You know he has the power possibly to kick in those high winds that we see from in Buffalo towards the end of the season. Also like his kickoff abilities. I think he only had nine kickoffs returned this past season 2019 in college. So you know he has the power to get the ball into the end zone and uh, lead to a lot of touchbacks. So that's really good to see as well. Last thing you want to see is the special teams giving up big kick returns and he really limits those. So those are two great things. Out of your kicker, he could challenge Steven Hauschka right away, possibly to for that starting spot. But that leads to the questions. Remember last season in the offseason, you just re-signed Steven Hauschka to like a three or four million dollar deal. Uh, two years, three million, two years, four million, something like that. So if you just restructured his contract, did you have to go kicker here? Could you have gone puncher here? The New York, New Jersey Jets went punter about four draft picks after the Buffalo Bills here and got a solid punter from Texas A&M. Could we have gone that route? Some of you on this channel liked the kicker out of Syracuse because he was a kicker slash punter in college. He could have done either or, and he was picked up, I believe, by the Atlanta Falcons in the seventh round. So he 
was still available. So a lot of questions here as far as if picking a kicker was the best position for the Buffalo Bills at pick 188. A good picker, a good kicker, I should say. Uh, he did make most of his kicks. I think it was like 93% of his kicks between 30 and 50 yards last season. So pretty impressive. So for that reason, I do give Tyler Bass a B minus grade as well for the Buffalo Bills. They move on to the sixth round, our second pick, pick number 207. We pick up Isaiah Hodgins out of Oregon State, wide receiver. Guys, I really like this pick. I'm really excited about this pick. And for that reason, I give this pick a B plus. I really like the size of Isaiah Hodgins. You're talking about 6'4", uh, going into the NFL. It's good size for the NFL. Great value. A lot of mocks had him mocked in the fifth round. We get him here late sixth round. And if you look at his college tape, as I talked about in my initial video, very limited drops uh, for Isaiah Hodgins. So you know that he's going to come down with the ball most of the times when he gets both hands on it. A very, uh, very happy thing to hear if you're a Buffalo Bills fan. Uh, questions, he struggles against press coverage. So that will be an issue in the NFL. If corners know that, if corners know that he's a little bit slower as well, they're just going to sit on routes, right? They're just going to sit on his routes and they're going to undercut his routes every single time if they're not worried about him going deep on him. So those are a little bit of the, those concerns that we might have for Isaiah Hodgins. And for that reason, I give this grade a B. They move on to Dane Jackson, uh, cornerback out of Pittsburgh, our last pick, pick 239 of the draft. I, again, love this pick, uh, cornerback. We needed to go corner at some point. Now, obviously, we go in the seventh round, so we're not sure if this guy's going to make the squad, uh, the 53-man roster. But if he does, I think that there's great upside here for Dane Jackson out of Pittsburgh. Dane Jackson in high school, and I talked about this a little bit in the initial video that I did on Dane Jackson, was originally a quarterback in high school. He did not convert to a cornerback until college. So he's actually only played three or four years at the cornerback position. So there's plenty of raw talent there that still needs to grow. And what a great place to come to Buffalo, a great scheme fit for a cornerback who could fit well as a slot corner when you have a coach like Leslie Frazier, when you have an ex-defensive coordinator like a coach Sean McDermott, who can really tutor a kid, bring him up. You bring in a guy like a Josh Norman who has some NFL experience under his belt. You have a great young cornerback in Trey White, plenty of great players for Dane Jackson. Jackson to learn from out of Pittsburgh. So I give Dane Jackson's pick an A in this NFL draft. So let me go through these really quick again. AJ Epinesa an A+. Plus. You got Zach Moss as an A. You got Gabe, Gabriel D Davis as a B. Jake Fromm, B-. minus. Tyler Bass, B-. minus. Isaiah Hodgins, B+. Plus. And then Dane Jackson an A. Gives this team an overall grade of a high a minus low A, so probably like a seven or 93, 94%, something like that. So a, a solid A for the Buffalo Bills in this draft class. Couldn't quite get enough value to give them that A plus, uh, but if you put them in the A minus range, I think that's still one of the better drafts overall by any team this year in the 2020 NFL draft. But let me know what you think. Again, let me know which picks you like the most, which picks you least enjoyed as a Buffalo Bills fan. And a lot of people were upset about the Jake Fromm pick. I personally was not. I think it's an overall good pick. Remember, you only have one more year of Matt Barkley on, uh, on contract. So there's plenty of reasons to pick Matt Barkley or Jake Fromm there. Uh, good value with that pick. So I really like that pick. If I had to have a least favorite pick, it would actually be Tyler Bass, uh, kicker. Again, I know he has a strong leg. However, I would rather see us get punter in that situation and possibly even pick up a wide receiver there. Even if it was Isaiah Hodgins, I think that's still good value for Hodgins. And then pick up a kicker or punter with that second sixth round pick, maybe even give Tyler Bass a C plus instead of a B minus. That would be my least favorite pick of this draft. My favorite pick has to be AJ Epineza just due to the value. My second favorite pick might be the surprise though. You have to go with Dane Jackson there with the seventh round pick. So let me know what you think in the comment section. Let me know what your overall grade was for the Buffalo Bills as they complete the 2020 NFL draft. And now we begin to wonder when are we gonna start seeing these players come to Buffalo? When is this coronavirus going to hopefully take the, a turn for the better and that we can get back to a little bit of normalcy in our lives? Make sure you guys are staying safe out there. Thank you for joining me on Believer. So again, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button for continual Buffalo Bills news. I look forward to talking to you all soon. Until I do, go Bills.